I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and rescued me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant with joy. Their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him. You who are his holy ones, fear the Lord, for those who fear him lack nothing. Young lions lack food and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Come, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Amen. Well, this is a, the psalm for our week, and I and it's not something that was picked at random. It actually comes out of Doberstein's uh, prayer book that I use sometimes as for my for my daily prayers as something appointed for for this coming Sunday or last Sunday. I can't remember. I don't know. The days run together. Uh, but it's Psalm 34, and it's one of my favorite psalms. It, it's one of those ones that I think actually works with our theme for this week as we're moving into looking at the fourth petition, Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread, in part because it, it begins by saying, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. That's a, that's a wonderful place to begin uh, any of our prayers. Uh, any of our praise, any of our worship, beginning there, that we will we will call upon the Lord, and, and we will say uh, who He is, how blessed He is, how wonderful He is, and and then it turns our boasting into something else. I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt His name together. How does that fit with 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 give us this day our daily bread? Well, as the Spirit works in us, as God's grace comes upon us, as, as we are open to the promise of God found in Him alone, as we, are, as we are captured by the Word, as we thirst and hunger for His righteousness, for, for the sacraments, for, for the daily bread He gives us from His table, something changes in us. A work is done as, in us. As Ezekiel talks about taking our stony heart and giving us a heart of flesh that beats for Him. This, this uh, boasting in the Lord causes us not to boast in ourselves. And, and that's actually how uh, give us this day our daily bread comes to us as law to begin with. It, 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 it comes to us in that way because it tells us that number one, we can't take our daily bread. Our daily bread is given to us. God, we, we call on God to continually provide for our needs. Unfortunately, we live in a world that tells us that uh, we can fight for whatever it is that we want. We can get whatever we want when we want it. We, we talked about that last week, uh, dealing with my will versus, versus God's will. The, the, the fact that if I want something, I can order it on my phone. I ordered pizza on my phone last night for our, our young adults group. Um, the, the, the ease by which we can get a hold of things, right? And so we boast in ourselves. We boast in our own accomplishments. We boast in our own glory. We boast in our own power because that is our default. And yet the psalm comes to us and it tells us that, no, that's not the way it is supposed to be for us. And so when we say, I will boast in the Lord, the humble will hear and be glad. Boasting in the Lord for the humble becomes good news. For the humble, for the ones who have been humiliated, who have been brought low, Boasting in the Lord becomes good news because we suddenly are not boasting in ourselves, but we're boasting in Him and what He does and what He has, has given us regularly. And it goes on to say, I sought the Lord and He answered me and rescued me from all my fears. I, I wonder if fear and worry is something that we ever think about when we pray that, give us this day our daily bread. I, I wonder if fear and worry are something that, that we actually truly understand to be the outgrowth of our reliance on ourselves rather than a reliance on God. The fact that we are people of little faith and that we do 
worry and that we are fearful all the time. And yet here in the psalm, we are declaring that God has rescued us from that. How? In part because he gives us all good things. That's what he promises us, all good things in him. The world spends the majority of its time trying to cause us not to see that. But the goodness of the Lord comes to us in that way and in rescuing us from all our fears because he provides for us regularly and abundantly. I wonder how many times you've had the same worries over and over and over again, forgetting of what it is that God has done for you. That you worry about this or that and then it just turns out that things work out just like they worked out the last 25 times when you worried and things still worked out. Those who look to him are radiant with joy. But when we look to him, we know that, that he is where our happiness, our joy, our contentment lies. Their faces will never be ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. I wonder what that picture looks like for you. I'd love to know what that picture looks like for you. Maybe you can uh, comment on this video or, or podcast. Uh, you, can, you can comment through my website or, or send me an email here at the church. I wonder what that looks like for you when a poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. I bet as first world Americans, we have a different view of that than maybe what the biblical view is. And I, and I wonder... The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. And then I love this. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That's something that we say at the table almost all the time. When we get done with the liturgy and, and we do the welcome to the table and then we say, taste and see that the Lord is good. That, that, that we, we taste of what it is that God has given us, even if it's one meal a day, not three. And we know that God is good because he's provided for us. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him. When we say, give us this day our daily bread, it's a way of us saying, Lord, I am at your mercy. Save me. You are my refuge and my strength. You who are his holy ones, fear the Lord, for those who fear him lack nothing. Those who fear him lack nothing. Finding in him our wholeness, our life. Young lions lack food and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. That is the promise of God for you, that he's going to give you all good things. The only problem is, is that you have a particular idea of what those good things are, right? Because our sinful selves, are, the old us, desires a particular thing, and God is doing this work in us to put us to death and to raise us to new life in him so that we begin to have our eyes opened and our hearts changed in order to understand that we lack nothing when it comes to God. And then that final verse in verse 11, because this was just verses 1 through 11. Come children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The hope is, is that when we open up the scriptures, when we, when we, when we come to church, um, when we go to Bible study, when we listen to podcasts or videos on, on YouTube, the hope is, is that you are there to hear from a servant of God, someone who, who has been set aside to be one who speaks this word to you of life in him, where he calls you out to rebuke you for the times in which you, you do not trust God, but then also to call you back to trust in him alone because he promises you all good things in his name may that be so for you this week let us pray oh god who gives daily bread without prayer even to all the wicked we pray that you would give us to acknowledge your benefits and enable us to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving through jesus christ our lord amen well church god's mercies be with you as they always are uh, if you can take a chance, uh, subscri subscribe to my channel here. Subscribe to our, our church channel, Grace Lutheran Church, Ridgecrest, California. Uh, you can subscribe to this podcast, the Treadweary Podcast. Share it with others if you are enjoying it. Um, we have listeners in, in Russia and Germany and, and Singapore and, and a few other places. Uh, but uh, take the time to, to do that uh, for us so we can have a chance to reach more people 
the, the glorious gospel, the gracious gospel of Jesus Christ found and given to sinners. Well, church, go in peace, serve the Lord. We'll see you tomorrow.